Congratulations. Thank you. Um, it's it's such a, a beautiful and, and um, powerful piece of work. Mm. Um, what was your first connection, first time that this story, this particular story, um, you were aware of it? Was it was it through the play? Was it through physical play um, or for reading the play? I was aware. I was aware of of it kind of generally. Yeah. I didn't really. I hadn't read it. Didn't really know what it was about. Yeah. Um, until 2020, where I actually sat down and read it. And I know my brother was like, my brother was kind of talking about it. So that was kind of like, an, all right, let me see what he's, you know, <laughs> yeah. let me see what he's working What's with. He reading? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and I read it and was like, okay. It just like shot me in the heart. You know, it's like, okay, yeah. you gotta, you gotta like focus up now. <laughs> like li listen to what, what's happening here because it's a really big, it was like a moment for me. Um, and so it, it kind of stopped me and, and made me, re-engage certain parts of my life. Yeah, but I love reading how um, how it also sent you on a journey of discovery, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of just, you committed to the story, you committed to the research, you committed yeah. to wanting to, to really find the depth of your connection to it, I think, if that's fair. That's exactly fair and it's exactly right. I mean, when you deal with something that's so personal like this is, and like it, as personal as ancestry and lineage is, yeah. there's a certain, um, seriousness to it that you that you want to take on but also it's like pulling a thread of curiosity because mm. you look at a picture like I, I saw this one image and it was my grandmother is four years old in this image and she's with her grandparents on a porch Wow! and it's like I'm staring at her face the four-year-old face of my grandmother you know I'm staring in her face and I see my sister's face I see my cousin's face and I'm thinking about this time span that this image on my computer now, what that spans, you know, and you start reading into those faces and you read into that story, you wonder just what's at the edge of those frames. Mm. Um, and working on the movie felt like investigating the corners of that frame, you know, it felt like turning the camera to the side yeah. and seeing the world that, that this all in inhabited. What was really important for you between making that connection with reading it and making that decision that you wanted to adapt it into a screenplay and, and make it as your first full length feature? Um, what was the decision? What was the journey? You what know, was the journey, of, yeah. yeah of, of, of kind of, yeah, making those steps. Yeah. So there's kind of two things that are happening at the same time, right? Yeah. So there's like the kind of deeper, uh, personal, conceptual and intellectual journey of the film of like what I think the movie's really about, like this idea of ancestry and, and lineage and, and how we're a part of this much larger story. Yeah and investigating my, my own life and my own story in that way. And then there's the, the storytelling part of it, which yeah. is how are we telling the story, how are we can, uh, conveying this message through cinema to audiences and, and bringing them into it. And they were both really fulfilling journeys because on one hand, it's, it's the personal, it's the intimate, it's your, your family story. And anytime you dig into that, you're unearthing parts of yourself that you're discovering. And on the other hand, it's like, the passion in my life's work in that I love film, I love movies, I love watching them, I love making them, um, I love working with people. And so you're, you're getting to do both at the same time and develop your language, uh, work with the most talented people you know, and, and put something together. Yeah. It's like just the process of making that is so exciting and so fun. Yeah, absolutely. And what about, and in terms of, you know, working, um, working with Virgil on the on, mm. on the screenplay, you know, I mean, Mudbound for me was just a, an incredible piece of work. Yeah, um, I was listening to the score for that actually just just the other day, and um, beautiful score, beautiful score. Yeah, and we'll get to music in just a second, but 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 having someone to kind of um, you know to kind of bounce off and, yeah. and what was that relationship and how did you guys kind of you know work together to to create this wonderful? Vir Virgil's a really special dude. I, I got so much love for Virgil and his family. Yeah, um, but. We, it, it was really like a brotherhood in a lot of ways because we the way that we worked was he has a place in the desert. And so in L.A., it, it would be like an hour, two-hour drive from L.A. Yeah. So we would go in like one week at a time, and it would almost be like camp. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, I'd drive down on Sunday, <laughs> and we'd wake up, uh, make coffee. Oh, wicked. Get, yeah, get to get to work and work from, you know, all day. And it was just so focused. Yeah. And it, it was like in that time, we were also rediscovering the text. You know, we're like excavating it too and trying to find the meaning and bouncing off each other because there's so many stories in this story. Yeah. And August writes in a way that's like so layered. It's so, in one line, 
there might be an entire story that you have to go research to understand what the line means. You know, there's so much yeah. history and just like colloquial language that you got to really do the work. So we would kind of spin off on that for a little while. There were some days <laughs> where we're not doing much writing at all. You know, we're yeah. like reading and like trying to figure out what this stuff means. Um, and that's that was like such a special time and a, a really warm time in, yeah. in my life. Like I, I have so much love for Virgil. I love the idea of kind of almost leaving leaving your life behind in yeah. the desert and kind of, you know, you almost drive it into. Exactly. And you know what? It was very, like, I'm from L.A., so the, like, story of the West is, like, a, you know, a big part of our, our story as, as a place. Yeah. And it felt like we were, like, minors. Like, I'm going, you know, leaving home and going <laughs> yeah. out on the on the Western front yeah. and just, like, figure, you know, try to find gold. And we were just <laughs> going to work with a pickaxe every day. It just yeah, felt like picking that. picking up the story. Picking up the yeah. story, yeah, because it's, like, it's something that's too big of a chunk. You can't do it in one sitting. It takes time. Yeah. And you have to go. And then we would take a few weeks in between and, like, really think about stuff. And I'm rereading what we wrote and learning more and, mm. and just kind of going back and forth and back for like almost almost a year. Wow. You know? How did music play a part in that in camp at all? Did you Of course, did, of course. <laughs> we played so much music. Yeah. Um I think I don't know if he started this or I I I don't love silence. Some I just like a little something going on. Yeah. And so we'd play a lot of there was just a lot of jazz. And we're dealing music is so important to August's legacy and it's a really uh, wonderful connective tissue yeah. through generations and like passing like I'm my parents musically their generation is like the 70s you know so I inherit that and yeah. I have such love for that era of music and it's something that's passed down and if you're telling a story of intergenerationality music is going to be a part of that because that's such a big thing Yeah. Um, so we played a lot of music I knew music was going to be a big role in it I wasn't sure exactly how it would shake out um, but Every step of the way, we engage music in some way, and then ultimately we get this really rich and eclectic kind of musical offering to, in the movie. Yeah, there's the, there, it does. There's so many different kind of um, tones to the to the different elements of the music. Yeah, is there much music in the in the original play? You know, in terms there, of there there's music uh, written into it. So there's there's obviously uh, Bernice plays at the end. Yeah. That's always been in it. Yeah. Whining Boy does I think two songs in the play. Yeah, and he did one song in the film. Yeah. Um, but the like Erica Badu section, you know, we we inf we brought that into it, and yeah. and then all the kind of non diegetic music we we brought to it, obviously. Because it starts with this, you know, with the, with the opening scene with the fireworks and this kind of the vo the use of voices in mm. in that kind of that real kind of crescendo. Yeah, it's just it's it's beautiful. It's Desplat, so, man. Yeah, he's a legend. He's oh my, a legend. Yeah, and we we he brought such a wonderful tone to it as well like what he the where he's operating musically is unlike any of the other music in the film so it brought this kind of counterpoint and, and expansion yeah. of the musical world um and he uplifted this whole thing with this beautiful orchestral thing going that was like the choir voices felt like it was like myth it made these these stories so important it felt like like when my parents talk about their grandparents or something they sound like you know, mythical people that are larger than life. Yeah. And he brought that kind of, that, yeah, that feeling yeah, yeah. and those stakes uh, in that choir where Boy Charles sees the piano, he lifts the thing up and sees the piano for the first time, that choir comes in, and you're like, okay, this is some mystic stuff going on here. And when we kind of flip forward that 25 years as well, there is there is a kind of, there's a musical shift to almost kind of, um, to, to kind of almost bring the, the music up to date in a way with, with kind of where we are as well. You know, it kind of time shifts slightly as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and to, to set the tone. Yeah. So it's like we start with this prologue, right, which is almost pure cinema. There's like no language. It's just image and sound, mm -hmm. image and music, image and sound, just pure cinema. Then we get into the contemporary, the, the world of now in our story. Yeah. And we're dealing with it, introducing contemporary music. So it's like, it's all, we're all meeting at the middle. P past and present meets here. Uh, past and future meets here. Um, and that, that was so important to set the tone for the story, the first seven minutes of the movie. Hey, what you're seeing now, these, this is something new for you. Settle in, you know, this is not like the <laughs> yeah. other, it's not what you, what you expected probably coming yeah. into it. Well, I think that that's what I found one of the many things that I found so refreshing about about the experience that I felt as a film is is it felt like just such a new telling of a story and that I hadn't nothing I'd ever kind of seen before mm. and this you know the kind of um, the the ghost story element to it as well was just told with such so subtly but so powerfully mm. and music is such a big part of how you 
that story's almost running alongside how we're learning about all these other characters, yeah. if that makes yeah, absolutely. sense. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and you know what's so interesting? Working with a master like Desplat, like he is so considerate in how he approaches music, and he sometimes talks about music being almost like another actor in the yeah. scene. Um, and the dynamic that he brings, when you, when you put, if you put temp music or if you put no music, it's a much different scene than what he's bringing to it. Mm. Um, and he was just so open to the idea of the movie and connected with it himself. And it was just so, so cool working with somebody like that who had so much to bring. Did you have a, I mean, the conversations that you had with him, did you, did you have any reference points? Did you kind of have an idea of, of what you wanted? And it is that collaboration, isn't it? Yeah. You know, if you, of backwards and forwards mm -hmm. with ideas. It was so interesting because we we met in the middle. We, he I didn't know this about him until we started working together. He has such a deep love for jazz. He has such a deep appreciation for jazz. Mm. And we must have spent so many of the early conversations just talking about Quincy Jones. <laughs> I'm like, Quincy Jones is like the most consequential musician, you know, in American history to me. Yeah. I'm like, he's like one of the one of the ones, you know. And he loved, he was like teaching me about <laughs> I'm like, okay, this is, we're off to a beautiful a relationship. Yeah. yeah, this is going to be great. Um, and you know how the process is. You kind of, you start here so you can go there to ultimately end up over here. Mm. And I think he was so open to that process and, and sitting in the room together and just listening to music and him playing stuff for me. It was always just the two of us. Like it wasn't this whole big, yeah. you know, you work with somebody like that who is so massive. You think that there's this whole thing that's going to be, but it was just so, it was felt like just your your friend from yeah. childhood just sitting on the piano together. And he's like, oh, what about something like this? And he, him finding the, the theme to the song just on the theme to the film just on his piano is just beautiful. Wow. It's amazing that, isn't it? It kind of just It's like magic. Of, I don't know how yeah. they do I'm like so impressed. Yeah, it's so unbelievable. Impressed. And and those diegetic moments in the film as well are so you know, the the scene with, with the men singing Yeah, um, special. Special, <sighs> special. And you can see how it affects them as mm -hmm. characters after they've performed it together. Yeah. And you've got generational experiences Ex within that scene as well exactly and it's so it's like acting on the highest level to me what they what they pull off in that moment because you're just totally reading into their eyes they're only giving you that and there's telling such complicated story mm. through a song and through their breathing and they're just the grunts and their sounds and they're telling you such a such a big they're communicating such big ideas and conflict internal conflict of processing trauma, of processing pain, of fighting through that, of perseverance, all just in their faces. And mm. and obviously we were, we try to hold on that as much as we can and just really uh, allow them to tell that story. And, and the, what yeah. they did was so beautiful there. How, how did you, what was the, what was the kind of rehearsal or the prep around that? And what was the, talk to me about, about shooting that and. So yeah. that was, they knew the song because they did, the four of them did it on Broadway. Broadway. So that was like a huge advantage for that part that they knew it. But what we were doing was different because it was try to be, make it more intimate and get into what you're exactly what you're talking about, the interiority of them. On Broadway, on the, on the stage, it becomes kind of more for the audience in a way where the audience is, they're engaging the audience. There's like a choreography and a whole like kind of number towards the audience. Where here it's like, we're at the table now. We're like inside, we're trying to be inside yeah. of that dynamic and um, in there kind of psychological, emotional state. So we didn't really rehearse it that much. We we did like, we kind of marked it out and me and my DP talked about it a lot. <laughs> we talked about it a lot <laughs> of what we were trying to make it, you know? Yeah. And I didn't want to burn the actors out because we recorded all the vocals on the day. Oh, we didn't wow. do any pre-record. It was like everything you hear in the movie, they did that night. And we did takes and takes all night. Wow. It's so beautiful. and. Our, our, we had a wonderful pair of dolly grips who danced with them the whole night. For real, it was just pushing that dolly around and finding the poetry in their, in their actions and in their, in their faces. And this, the moments that followed directly after it, what you're seeing is, is them exhausted of doing this thing all night. And the place that they got in their voices are gravelly because they've been singing for six hours, screaming, you know, for six hours. And there was just this, like this calm of like after war or something, like after after a battle, yeah. where there's just like a, a, a quietness to it and an introspection to it that 
sh I think shooting in that way and then also what they were just performing themselves that really built that. Uh, yeah. It also kind of right, the, the the way that you've shot it as well and, and the kind of the really stripped back uh, kind of nature of it is it kind of takes you almost back to the origin of the song in a way. You mm. feel kind of almost you're you're being transported through their their performance of it to the origins of yeah, the song. Through totally. all their you know, all their histories. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and and that's like, that's the when you when you put it together because I think maybe especially if you're not super familiar with the history, mm. maybe you think, oh, th is this like a musical? Or, you know, it kind of is fun a little bit, and then through their reaction to it, you start you start feeling that thread of history yeah. of like where traces back to the original. Like, oh, what this must have meant to you then on Parchment Farm, you know, basically an indentured servitude and, and a, a new form of slavery. Um, what this meant to you then that it's still touching you and connecting you now and that's touching us, you know, 2024, it's, it's a heavy, it's, yeah. a, it's a heavy legacy. Yeah. The, um, Danielle's performance in I Want You To Help Me scene is... Well, I think in the whole movie. I mean, yeah, of <laughs> but, course, yeah, but the whole where movie. She go, but, where she goes but, in that, yeah. special. Yeah. She's one of those ones. She's like... Yeah, I yeah. mean, I imagine that the kind of, you know, the, the physical and mental and emotional ask of her mm. in for that scene mm. is is huge amazing um and commitment yeah totally. real commitment like i think acting is such a difficult people don't understand what's required of you when you when you do that job people don't understand mm. the depths that you have to go to what you have to wrestle with yeah the 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 psychological journey that you have to go inside of yourself and and pull out of that and pull yeah. that out and that she was so willing to do there from just a skill level from a vulnerability level is amazing and then from a craft level of of we shot that scene over the course of days oh wow there's so many elements to that yeah there's so many elements to that that's like a huge puzzle and that she was able to to do that again and again and go there again to the point where by the end i basically carried she like collapsed and i'm like <laughs> carrying her through a cell. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she was like <laughs> she she gave it all you yeah, know you and, and everybody uh corey in the lead up to that, went somewhere else. John David upstairs is like, all of them just committed themselves yeah. wholly to that. And and it's a scary thing. You don't know what that's going to be. You know, you read that on the paper, you're like, it, it's so pecu peculiar. You don't yeah. know how the, any of the ancestor stuff is going to work. Um, and they just committed to it and, and put their trust in me. And that was like, I wanted to succeed for them and, and make a, a film that they would be proud of their own performance. And I hope that she's proud of what she did there because I'm unbelievably proud of it. Yeah, I think it's extraordinary. I wanted to ask about the piano. Yes. Because it is a thing of beauty. Yes. It's such a, um, it's, it's a work of art. Um, but what did you, you talked about kind of getting that made for the film. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and so so the piano tells a story itself, yeah. right? It's like a, it's a physical object, but it's also a symbol. It's an altar. It represents so many generations. It tells a story of Black America, um, where you have this instrument that was built in Europe, you know, in the 18th, 19th century, that's been reclaimed, you know, in, in the in the 20th century, and so it spans all this time, and we wanted to tell that story both um, in the object itself, but also kind of imbuing that object with with that kind of meaning. And, and we looked at the original piano because there was so much, I wanted to, there's a lot of little like, little stories that are connected to different parts of the film. And yeah. a lot of that's private, but but this one, we wanted to honor the, um, the original production. And we looked at the, I, I was able to go into the archives, August Wilson's archives, oh, which wow. was a, a special thing, insane. Wow. And they they rolled out his notes and all of his material, and I, and they have a blueprint of the original p piano and the notes around what it all meant. So we were like, okay, we're gonna work off of this blueprint. We're gonna honor that, oh. and then add our add our piece yeah. to it. So within the panels, we tell the story in each of the panels, and and each all the carvings are based on people in my life, uh, ancestors I've had. Uh, the the people that that put me in the position to even make this movie and make this piano, we wanted to honor them um, and imbue everything with meaning, so that when the actors are there, they're feeling that energy. When John David sits down and he wants to talk about selling the piano, it's like, okay, look at your grandfather's face right there and, and try to sell it. You know, try to put set distance between you and that there, like yeah, wrestle yeah, with that. Yeah. 
in real time, you know? Oh, wow, that's so great. Yeah. So that, that was like, that was so special. Uh, the process of workshopping that piano, and we had an amazing uh, production designer, David Bamba and Chardé and Jordan Jeff, uh, Je uh, Just Justice that put all that together. Yeah. Um, and put so much meaning in it. Yeah. How is it directing your brother? <laughs> it was fun. Did you do it sold? Did he... <laughs> you know what? He he's like such a wonderful spirit to work with, and and he's somebody I think the thing that emb uh, empowered everybody because he he's so serious about his work, but he has such a freedom and maybe a recklessness, which is really exciting. Yeah, where he's like. Uh, I'll, I'm gonna just add, you know, he just goes off. What's he gonna do? Yeah, you don't know. You know, every, so many, so many wonderful surprises. Yeah. And I think when somebody's bringing that spirit, especially working on a text that's so revered, mm. when somebody's fearless in it, you're like, yeah, okay, let's let's do it, let's try it. Yeah. And uh, he he brought such a great energy to it. Oh, I, I adore watching him. And um, just before when we wrap, before we wrap, just the Frank Ocean track I wanted to mention as yes. well. Yes. Um, Wither, which is. Um, it's just a, it's it's almost kind of just a beautiful ending. So pretty. Um, was it always going to be that? Did you? Did it you... it wasn't always going to be that. It was it was many different things for di at different points. Yeah. We were like looking at original stuff, but the Frank song always that was one of my favorite songs. It means so much, and it feels like it encapsulates the whole story, um, in a beautiful poetry. But Frank is an enigma, so you you're not even sure if you'll be able to use stuff. And yeah. it's like everybody fell in. We all fell in love with it. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I wonder. If this is gonna, if we'll be able to get to use it, like, and Frank, you know, it's all who, doing who knows, you know, Frank yeah. is just out He's there, Frank. so you just, yeah, you send like a smoke <laughs> signal and you hope that that he comes back and that's what happened. We sent a signal up and Frank got it and was like, hey, you can use it, and and it was amazing. And and now I can't think of the movie ending in any other way because so much of that of that end, it's like bringing the the past, future, and present all collapse on itself. Yeah. Um, and ending with a contemporary black American song and one of our, our premier artists of all time um, kind of ushering off in a benediction to, to the credits and honoring all the people that come. Yeah. I put the movie together. It just felt like the most fitting way to end it. It's almost that line, isn't it? I'm supposed to build on what they, they left It's me. exactly that. Yeah. It's exactly that. Yeah. I'm so excited about your journey and what's next and Thank you. what you're going to make for us to, to watch. It's been a, a treat to talk to you and watch this film. That means the world. Thank this you so awesome. much. Great to chat to you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much.